Hey, what's up, Silver Stackers? Thank you for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. Three hours ago, a very popular YouTube channel called Graham Steven posted a video titled Congress Wants to Ban Investing. Stocks and crypto will be banned. And do you think precious metals would be next? Probably. This channel has over 4 million subscribers, a very popular investing type channel mainly talking about the Fed markets, stocks, not too much precious metals. I don't think precious metals at all, actually, but it's still very important to stay up to date with this type of stuff. It's just ironic that he posted this video today talking about stocks and crypto being banned when yesterday I talked about precious metals being banned. It's, it's, it's too ironic to be ironic, folks. I made a video titled Something Big is About to Happen to Silver, and in this video I'm talking about silver being banned banned. And actually, in the interview I posted today, which I think will be yesterday for you guys, it's Andy Sheckman and I, our weekly podcast, talking about silver potentially being confiscated. So we know that it's not just one side of the story. It's all intertwined together, revolving around the Federal Reserve, revolving around the economy, not even just the United States. We're talking about something much bigger on a global scale, even if you want to go into the BRICS nations and Saudi Arabia, the petrol dollar, so on and so forth. And if you really want to get into that side of things, then go check out the interviews I do with Andy Sheckman. He is incredible at breaking that entire situation down. I want to focus on silver getting banned in particular for this video. Now, I don't want to take away from Graham's video. If you want to watch it, I will link it in the description. If I showed it, especially since it just came out, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a shady thing to do, kind of just to steal his content. But I did want to mention what the the subject matter is about, the substance, especially since I was just talking about this yesterday, and now we have even more confirmation. See, the dollar and and, and precious metals are a direct threat to each other. I mean, more so the you know silver is a direct threat to the dollar since. Silver is real money, and the dollar is dependent upon people's um, people's hope. It's literally as strong as people think it is. If people start to think the dollar isn't worth anything, it's not. And countries across the, uh, across the globe are realizing it's not. Especially this pandemic exposed how broke the United States really is. The dollar's lost 98% of its original purchasing power. Not 99%, not 97%, 98% percent of its purchasing power were 30 trillion dollars of debt and a reset is going to happen i mean if you look at any of graham's videos i mean he really dives into the federal reserve uh side of things which i do like to stay up to date with you know recessions here prices falling why 25 percent of workers just quit their job housing market is going insane uh worst housing crash in 40 years um you know, it, it, I mean, he, he goes into some very good stuff. China's about to cause a global recession. China's economic collapse just got worse. You could see that he mentions he mentions some very important things. And um, to, to also, you know, intertwine that with the precious metals side of things could be very, very interesting and educational. See, I'm not an expert in this side of things. That's why I would offer you to go watch Graham's video. Now, before we go into the reasons that I personally think that silver could get banned or even confiscated, I wanted to mention a huge announcement. Robert Kiyosaki is the famous celebrity author of the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He has a YouTube channel. Two and a half million subscribers. Andy Sheckman was on his show last week, and that video already has 500,000 views. It's called the Rich Dad Radio Show. And um, I got an email from his manager saying that Robert Kiyosaki saw one of my recent videos and wants to have me on his show. So, of course, I said yes, and um, I'm doing the show October 4th. I mean, th this is, I mean... It was a huge deal for Andy to be on his show. Andy's already famous himself, and Andy was, you know, a little starstruck and shocked to be on his show. So for me to be on his show is even, it's even crazier. I mean, this is something, and, and when I told Andy, you know, when, when I told Andy about it, the first thing he said is, you ever heard that Eminem song? 
you, you know the song. I got to be ready. I got to be prepared. And Andy said, you know, are you ready for this? And I, I mean, see me, I was just like, yeah, I'll take it. And then when I talked to Andy about it, you know, that, that's when I realized the severity of the matter. You know, he, since Andy was on that show, he said he's been getting thousands of emails. Like this could be a, a, a very big deal for me. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to be as prepared as I can be. You guys know that it's just leading up to it. Once I start talking, once he start ask, you know, starts asking me questions, a light flips on and I'm good to go. But it's the lead up to it. You know, that's the scary part. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just wanted to announce that. And um, I'm really excited. Big things are happening. Life is crazy right now, to say the least. And I cannot thank you all enough for the incredible support i'd love for you guys to give me some words of encouragement as well uh, send an email info.silverslayer at gmail.com i'm gonna need it leading up the next couple of days so anyways let's jump into this in my video yesterday in my video yesterday i was mentioning i was mentioning how silver could get banned and when i was mentioning this when i was mentioning this i was i was talking about why this is a lot more possible than I think people realize. Silver was banned before. It was banned before. It was called Silver Rule 7, and it was during the Hunt Brothers period when they bought up all the silver on the Comex and turned it into physical delivery. Same exact thing Wall Street Silver's doing currently. Currently doing. See, when the Hunt Brothers did that, they pushed the price of silver up to $50 and the Comex was going to get exposed because the Hunt Brothers, those three brothers, owned up to 77% of the global silver supply. Now, obviously, the government wasn't going to let that fly because even in 1980, we needed silver back then. You know, we, we were still advanced technologically enough where we, you know, those three brothers couldn't have all the silver. We wouldn't be able to make anything. So what they did was banned silver on the Comex banned it you couldn't buy it called silver rule seven that was during the time uh that silver was the highest price even till this day it, it's never been higher than that period with the hunt brothers in 2011 it was close but not as high as in 1980 so when the government did that obviously you couldn't buy silver on the comex you had to sell it and you had to sell it to the federal reserve right and nowadays wall street silver isn't in the limelight anymore but they're still buying just as much silver. The spotlight just isn't on them. They've been buying ever since. And actually, they have a much bigger following now. And it's not just them. We have billionaires. Robert Kiyosaki, Jim Rogers, uh, Warren Buffett, the lady from Texas, that billionaire that bought $50 million of silver with uh, Miles Franklin, you know, Andy Schechtman, Andy Schechtman's the CEO of. You know, bigger names are coming into the space. And I don't think that people realize how scarce silver really is. It is, I mean, the LBMA and COMEX vaults are already empty. Already empty. The production, right, mining production versus global demand is already at, at you know, um, it, it's already in a deficit. We're, we're digging up around 850 million ounces of silver annually, but our demand exceeded 1.112 billion ounces. Um, uh, we, we have solar panels, 15% uh, increase this year. Imagine by next year, not even including electric vehicles or 5G towers. You know, we don't have enough silver. And the COMEX is going to get exposed and will collapse sooner than later. But the feds aren't going to try. They're not going to let that happen. They're, they're going to try to play every straw they have. Just like in 1980 with the Hunt Brothers, they banned silver, deemed the Hunt Brothers as these evil guys. Because what if, and since that story broke, what if people started asking, why, why were those guys buying a whole bunch of silver? When the reason they were is because they understood the dollar's collapsing, it's worthless, and they wouldn't have put their money into something that has intrinsical value. Do you think the government wanted people to find out that reason? No. So they made it seem like they're these criminals just trying to do something illegal, right? It's it exactly the way they pushed it for that reason. And interestingly enough, the Hunt brothers got into silver during that time because gold was banned at that time. You couldn't buy or own gold. That's why they got into silver. Just in 1980, gold was banned. So if you want to talk about banning silver, 
for that reason alone, not even talking about, you know, the videos that, that Graham is making right now with the, you know, the government, the Federal Reserve, interest rates. I mean, even with the U.S. Mint stuck in this situation, they can't even purchase silver planchets from other, uh, other mints like the Sunshine Mint because the Treasury or, or the Secretary cannot pay above spot price. Every other country can. Every other mint can. But the U.S. Mint can't because we're trying to hold down interest rates on our own $30 trillion of debt. We're in an entirely different situation than the rest of the world, folks. And that's also why eagles aren't going to be, you know, aren't going to be magically uh, dropping premiums anytime either. And the worst part about all of that is now it's happening to gold. Andy Sheckman is one of the few authorized dealers. There's only like 12 or I think maybe 17 authorized dealers in the world. That, that can still purchase through the U.S. Mint. The U.S. Mint cut off everyone publicly from buying silver or silver eagles and gold eagles. You know, Atmex, all these other sites, they can't buy from the U.S. Mint directly anymore. You and I can't. Miles Franklin can. Andy Sheckman can. not and I, and I asked since he can, I asked in the interview yesterday with him, I said, what's going on with that? Is there, you know, do you have any inside news? And he said, yeah, I mean, they emailed him a couple months ago and said they're cutting down the production of gold eagles by 50%. But why gold? Gold isn't scarce. And Andy knew right then something is off. Either, and we got an, and I highly recommend you check out the, the podcast we did because he gets into some deep conspiracies as well, talking about the U.S. Mint might actually be hoarding gold and silver, saving for the inevitable collapse in the system and, and just for the reasons we want it. So what if they have it, they're just pretending like they don't, or they're not making any more eagles to let go of? That could be another interesting situation and scenario that actually makes more sense than not, if you really think about it. I mean, time and time again, we know that the U.S. Mint is, is just, it, the, the truth comes out a year later, right? It, just way after the fact. And, and the reality is people need to understand what's going on, need to know what's going on. When I broke all those stories about what's really happening within the U.S. Mint, their legal trouble, all that stuff, people were shocked, right? They were shocked. And it was from my channel. You know, imagine people that didn't see my channel or those videos. They're still wondering why Eagles premiums are so high. But anyways, th th that's kind of just talking about the whole situation with Silver getting banned. We know that the government is obviously not for silver, right? They're definitely against silver. It's a direct threat. Silver is real money. When you take fiat, fake money, out of your pocket and put it into precious metals, you took the control away from them. When you have investments pegged to the stock markets, that's like switching seats on the Titanic. When the dollar crashes, that's going down with it. With precious metals, it's not though. So if they're planning on banning stocks, and it just, I mean, of course, crypto would be something that could be banned. First of all, crypto is also just like precious metals. It's detached from the dollar. When you put your money into cryptocurrency, you also took the power away from them. They can't control you anymore. But nowadays, we have a lot of other, I mean, situations are changing so fast lately because we could have a new global tokenized coin that's backed by physical commodities. And that's coming from the BRICS nations and whatever could happen, you know, on that side of things. And then actually Andy talked about that as well and what if we could even, you know, get a hold of that new currency if it were to form it. What would happen with the United States? Would they confiscate every coin that's not minted in the United States? Are eagles and junk silver the only things that we will be able to hold on to since that is legal tender, you know, if you want to be technical? I mean, there's so much to this story, and lately I've been trying to peel back each layer. And you can see from what I'm talking, there are so many different conspiracies and roads to go down with this, but they're all important things to look at because they all are happening. It's not just speculation, putting on a tinfoil hat. The BRICS nations, that's real. That's real stuff. Those are real countries joining forces, kicking off America because they're tired of using the U.S. dollar as a world's reserve currency. I mean, that's a real thing happening in real time. Confiscation, though. 
it's not going to be like someone comes into your house and kicks down your front door. I think it would be more so, and I asked Andy about this as well. He had a different opinion than me. Um, and actually, he said, I like the response he said. He said, if we, if it gets to that and your, and your silver is getting confiscated, we'll have much bigger problems than that at hand. And that was a good point because if things do come down to that, that means that we're in some serious trouble you know, uh, globally. Um, and, and, and regardless though, I'm not turning in my silver, right? I mean, I, I actually, I can't say that, but regardless, this is how I think it would play out. They're not going to come kick down your front door. It would be something more like the executive order 6102 from FDR. That's when FDR confiscated everyone's gold. He put out in a news article said, the gold that's in your safe right now, that's no longer yours. It's owned by the Federal Reserve. You have to turn it all in. If you don't, you're going to pay a $10,000 fine, which is probably around $150,000 today, or 10 years in prison, or both. Have to. And, and that was a real thing. You had to turn it in. See... The reason they did that back then was for a completely different reason as they would today. And actually back then, you know, they, they set gold at a standard price at $35. And then once you see the gold standard got rid of in 1971, look what happened to the dollar's purchasing power, right? It, it diminished, it depleted instantly. So as soon as we got rid of our money as legal tender, things were bound to fail. We're trying to get ourselves out of debt by replacing it with more debt. That's like trying to pay off a credit card with another credit card. It's going to catch up. So... With silver, see, silver is a different situation because silver isn't just a monetary metal, it's an industrial metal. And I think the industrial side of things is why it could get confiscated. Unlike gold, where it's usually in times of war or economic turmoil. Those are the two times. It's because gold is what backs the country. Silver, on the other hand, is completely scarce. And once big industry starts to realize that, Realizing that we don't have enough silver to make these solar panels uh, and, and these electric vehicles to make the entire world go green. We're trying to hit a goal of zero net emissions by the year 2040. But silver is, is extremely scarce and we don't think or, well I mean it's not possible, the numbers don't add up. We're not going to be able to, to make that happen. So what are we going to do? Mining innovation? Right? Just learn how to dig up silver faster? There's only so much silver in the Earth's crust, and we've already dug up a lot of it. Most of the silver reserves over the since silver's been used as a, a means of value for 5,000 years, people have been mining it for 5,000 years, folks. Mining innovation can only go so far. What else? Recycling? Recycling? I mean, since most silver is thrown away, it's a byproduct, which means it's even more scarce since it's not really recycled at the rate gold is. You know, they find silver by accident. But think about this, right? It's not only a byproduct that silver's thrown away in landfills, never to be recycled. If we ramp up recycling, that could put a little dent. That, that might help the situation a little bit, but not completely. Nowhere near the, the billions of ounces we're going to need. If we exceeded 1.112 billion ounces this year and we just started the new green revolution, the new green age, what do you think, how many billions of ounces of silver do you think we'll need by the year 2025? We can barely keep up with the demand today, and we just started. Solar panels demand increase 15% this year. Solar panels have a very small half-life. Every automobile company by the year 2030 is going to be electric. Every single one. How do you think we're, we're going to be able to acquire that much silver? Or just reduce the amount of silver in each electric vehicle, which, yes, they're trying to do. It's like 55 grams in an EV right now, trying to cut it down to like 28 grams. That's not going to put a dent either. Even if you combine recycling and that, it's not going to be enough. We're talking about billions of ounces. So what else? Space mining? Yes, we are trying to do that. I actually just watched a new documentary. Um, there's some companies uh, that, that once we start to um, live on Mars, they're going to, because Mars is around a big asteroid belt, they're going to look into mining asteroids around that to um, get resources for humans to colonize on Mars. Um, but regardless, 
there's an asteroid headed towards Earth called 16 Psyche, or Psyche 16. It arrives by the year 2026. It has up to 500 quintillion dollars worth of precious metals on it. We're trying to mine this thing. NASA sent out a rover this year. But the possibility of mining that asteroid by the year 2026 is highly, 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 highly unlikely. Almost, It's almost not even possible. Um, but regardless, they're looking for solutions. They are looking for options. The other option is get it from us. But don't just don't just confiscate it like like uh, FDR did, you know, in 1930. Look at it for more of a heroic play. You know, the, the you know the world needs solar panels. We need this critical element, this metal. Turn in your silver. Help save the planet, right? Help save the planet. That would probably get people to turn in more of their silver as opposed to just saying, give us it and not give an explanation. As, you know, when we're talking about the reality of, of not being able to or having to cut down the production of solar panels or, or uh, you know, cut down the amount of Teslas or, or cars we make each year or have to, you know, prolong that. Maybe zero net emissions by the year 2050 or 2060. I mean, we're talking about global warming and climate change, serious things here. And not only those things, silver is used for everything. Not just EVs and solar panels; those are the biggest. But there's a even in the medical world. So, all those things together, I'm sure they're going to try all of them. They they're going to try every play in the book. Silver could get banned or confiscated. I think it has a better chance of getting banned than confiscated. I mean, if in the other part of it, if it was confiscated, is what type of silver? Would it be all silver for the reasons industrially like I was just talking about? Or would it be more of the monetary side of things where they would only confiscate silver that's not made in America, right? You could keep your eagles and your junk silver. Or what if we even get to a time where um, we could use that type of currency again like we previously did, you know, before the gold standard? See, there's so many different theories and so many different um, directions this could play out, and I don't even think, I mean, none of this is set in stone, I think, and nobody knows, I, I even think the higher-ups, I even think they don't even know right now, the BRICS nations, yes, they're working on something, but I don't think that anyone is really going to know exactly what happened since so many things are still happening today, is Russia going to go to war with China, it, you know, yada, 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 there's so many things, um, and, and I think that we're just going to have to learn how to play it by ear, we're going to have to learn how to adjust and adapt, just like with, you know, uh, eagles, you know, going back and forth with United States Mint. used to say, I used to recommend beginners buy eagles because they were so cheap. Then I started recommending them buy generics because eagles are so pricey nowadays. And now I'm almost saying maybe I'm going to start buying eagles again because if we're talking about government-backed silver, especially if we're talking about the, uh, you know, other uh, countries joining forces and kind of kicking America off to the curb, then maybe we would need, you know, uh, uh, silver made in America. So, I mean, there, there's so many different, um, so many different ways this could play out. Um, but I'm just trying to share some of the things that, that I personally, um, you know, have, have been looking into and some of what, I mean, I can't even say, I, I can't even really give an opinion because what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. Maybe I have less or more silver than you. Maybe I have a different financial situation. You know, I'm 30 years old, so maybe, I mean, I'm not planning on selling my silver if I do for another 30 years. Maybe someone else is retired and older. Maybe someone else lives somewhere else. You know, there's so many different factors. Maybe someone else is going to be exiting the market in five years as opposed to 20 years or you know, maybe someone else likes gold more, has more bullion than, than you know, semi-numismatics than I do. So I can't really say, you know, this is what you need to do. All I can do is share from what I've seen, you know, kind of where, where my head is into this. And if you want to even go watch, you know, Andy Sheckman, the interview, he throws a lot of, you know, his experience, especially since he's so deep into, um, you know, that circle of the biggest players in the game. He, he is one of the top dogs. And he has resources and, and networks with people that are far beyond any type of 
you know, information I could give you. And that's why I'm so honored that I'm able to do a show with him every week and get information behind the scenes of the U.S. Mint since he's one of the authorized dealers. And by the way, if you wanted to purchase from Miles Franklin, um, that's Andy Sheckman right there, CEO of the company. Um, they are one of the only authorized dealers. They, uh, they will match any price lower than theirs. So you literally cannot get any silver cheaper anywhere else because if it is cheaper, he will match it. Um, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let him know Silver Slayer sent you. Andy would love to hear it. It's been great working with him. He's Ever since I started working with him, my channel, my career has has blossomed tenfold doing interviews with David Morgan, right? People I've looked up to, been making videos about since 2015. Now we've got Robert Kiyosaki, you know, um, you know, responding to me. And I'm sure Robert Kiyosaki saw the video Andy and I did um, that has 75,000 views. We did two weeks ago where Andy really goes into the BRICS nations. I highly recommend you go watch that video um, as well. But yeah, I mean, a lot's going on. I I hope you guys are excited for me. Like I said, if you guys got any words of encouragement or just to, you know, keep the morale up, send me an email, info.silverslayer at gmail.com. Um, you know, I, I really do always enjoy when you guys, you know, you know, send me an email and just say, hey, I love the content. or been watching you for years or whatever, stuff you like. That does help. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ready. I'm going to come prepared. I mean, it is the biggest deal, you know. I mean, this guy has two and a half million subscribers on his channel. I'm going to be on that channel. That video is probably going to get 500,000 to a million views. All new people because, I mean, he's new into the silver stacking world. So the, so we're, I'm, I'm, there's going to be hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of new people hearing me talk about silver and why I invest in the silver. That's a huge deal. You know, and it's not even about me. It's not, oh, it could boost me up. This is me trying to get the message across to all those people of why they need to protect themselves. You know, it's not about me. Oh, yeah, I could get some, some subscribers from this. But the main point of him bringing on, my ch on his channel is so I can talk about what I talk about, right? And, and so his audience can hear it. And so they could do what they need to do to protect themselves. And that's the most important part, you know. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe. You did give it a like. Share the video. I think this is some important stuff. I'm going to wrap this video up here. If you want to go check out Graham's video, I will link that in the description as well. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.